We are going south on I-25. Then at San Antonio, New Mexico here, which if you blink, you missed it, we turn onto US 380 East. It is such a beautiful drive. I mean, you all know I have a thing for the mountains and the deserts, right? This darker area up ahead is the Carrizoso Malpais lava flow, which was caused by an eruption about 5,000 years ago. See how it looks on the satellite image? Valley of Fires recreation area is here towards the end. And what a desolate place this is. We arrive by the town of Carrizoso, uh, where we are going to refuel and join US 54 South. As you can see, the landscape is starting to change. And here we are. This adobe-style building under renovations is the visitor center. Hi, how are you? Thank you. I have the annual pass. There you are. All right, thank you so much. Oh, no drones, okay. Yep, drones are forbidden here too. And here it kind of makes sense since we are so close to several military facilities, most notably the White Sands Missile Range, home of the Trinity site, where on July 16, 1945, they detonated Gadget, the first nuclear weapon ever. Alright, let's stop at this trailhead here. It's Minitini in the house, or on the sand rather. Well, let's uh, let's uh, take this uh, boardwalk. Here is called the Interdune Boardwalk. Here's some of the plant life we might be seeing here in the sand dunes. Let's continue. Here we have more infographics and signs talking about the fauna and the flora of this very interesting place. continue, immersing ourselves into this surreal, otherworldly landscape. For a little hike. Well, it is a five mile trail. I'm obviously not gonna do the whole thing, but 
let's just walk you know over the dunes and back and this is the Alcali flat trail amazing what we're seeing here is gypsum sand and the bright dots are selenite crystals this type of sand I've learned is quite rare because it is water soluble uh, good thing it doesn't rain here very much These sand dunes are also very popular for downhill sledding and because of its composition, the sand never gets very hot, not even on the hottest summer days. People from all over the world come visit this marvelous place. Well, let me just give you a 360 here of the of the White Sands National Monument and as the name indicates it's all white sand it's kind of off-white but those sand dunes it's, it's amazing how they look especially those back, back there that's really cool with the, with the mountains behind them really cool place but uh, Texas awaits, so we're gonna continue on our journey. Next time I come, though, I'm doing that five uh, mile loop. Is it five miles? Three miles? I forgot. Um, bring some water. Well, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Amazing place, the White Sands uh, National Monument. I mean, look at look at it. It's, it's like we are in the. I don't know. I know. I don't know where we are, but it's it's not Earth for sure. Let's continue towards the land not to be messed with, the Lone Star State, Texas. to Texas. Well, it was bound to happen. I get stuck in some rush hour traffic here just west of El Paso. My next stop is Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse, which I've heard great things about and while well, it is going to be a little bit on the pricey side, I figured you've gotta have at least one great steak while in Texas, right? So I've decided to splurge tonight. Mm, well, when nature calls... Yes, the ranch is a little bit out of the way at the Indian Cliffs Ranch, a good 10 miles north of I-10. I arrive right at sunset. It 
it is a huge property, a very pretty, very well maintained. Luckily, they have RV parking, so they direct me to park right behind this Class A diesel pusher. Beautiful. I'm here at the Cattleman's Ranch and I'm parked here with another RV. Check out these guys. They're very well nourished here. It is a beautiful evening here in Western Texas. Let's go inside. I feel particularly odd being here by myself, especially since there is no cell phone signal. So my only entertainment is other people's conversations and the menu. Well, my ribeye is here with baked potato, coleslaw, bread and mm, baked beans. Well, yeah, I knew this was going to be an expensive meal. Uh, my last restaurant meal of the whole trip. This place is huge. By the way, pretty good, pretty good steak. I approve. Of course, there's a horse. And we are parked there at the RV bus parking area. Okay, here's the plan. There is a Walmart nearby at a town called Horizon City. I have to backtrack about mm, 10 miles, not the end of the world, and then the idea is to drive to San Antonio tomorrow and maybe spend a day there, but mm, my plans are about to change. Anyways, here we are at the Walmart. Turn left toward Horizon Boulevard, then turn right. Well, uh, out of all the places I've ever stayed overnight, tonight for the first time, I feel uncomfortable at this place, so I'm leaving. This is the, the Walmart at Horizon Ziri. Uh, turn right toward Horizon Boulevard, then turn left onto Horizon Boulevard. This is the Walmart at Horizon City in Texas. Uh, turn left onto Horizon Boulevard. It's, uh, it's, it's just uh, east of El Paso. And it is a very busy uh, shopping uh, area, it is Friday night and uh, there were a bunch, bunch of youngsters jumping off my rear bumper. I mean, so I think I'm gonna stay at a rest area. And on I-10, I, I brew me some coffee. It's still relatively early, it's 8.30. I can drive for a couple more nights on, on I-10 and, and look for a better place. I drive late into the night finding all the rest areas filled to capacity with semi-trucks. So eventually, I end up at the Pilot in Van Horn. I wake up at 6 a.m., now in the central time zone, so I've lost one hour. The sunrise, still about an hour away. Hey, look, there was an RV park. The crack of dawn is starting to crack. There's that faint bluish glow on the horizon, indicating it is going to be daybreak soon. Now even more visible. And uh, check out the moon. I think I'm losing my mind.
to, to make a short story even shorter, uh, as I told you last night, I left uh, that Walmart uh, in the eastern out outskirts of El Paso. I didn't, it's not that I felt unsafe, but I didn't feel comfortable. It was uh, it was not quiet. There were a bunch of youngsters, you know, partying, and even some some kids that started jumping on my on my rear bumper. So you know. So I decided to, to leave and I, and, I, and I was hoping to find a, one of these rest areas or picnic areas uh, along the road, but they were all, all you know, f already full by that time. It was 9.30ish, all, you know, all truckers. Uh, late at night, all these rest areas are insufficient uh, compared to the large amount of, of, of truckers in the area. So I drove around 90 miles to, to Van Horn and, and I st stayed at the at the pilot uh, truck stop. I arrived around 11 p.m. but actually it was midnight because uh, I, I changed into central time zone now. So I slept about six hours. I put my alarm clock for, for 6 a.m. and uh, around 6.30, it was still nighttime, I left. It is now 7.30 so I've been driving for about an hour and um, gonna be a beautiful sunrise and it's actually everything works out because now I expect to, to get to San Antonio today and not tomorrow so uh, maybe a day earlier than usual but I mean than expected so I put my home address into the GPS and it says it's gonna take me one day and one hour to get home so um, if I were to drive non-stop, I didn't have to put gas, I didn't have to eat or, or go to the bathroom, I would arrive tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. in Miami, Florida. Of course, it's gonna take a lot longer than that. And check out, the sunrise is about to happen. All of a sudden, a drastic climate change as we start driving into this thick fog. Guess we're not in the desert anymore. Well, this is actually the bad weather I was trying to avoid, the reason I changed my travel plans back in Albuquerque. Better to tackle the storm down here in the south than up in Oklahoma or Kansas where they were forecasting snow and slit and all kinds of crazy weather. Pretty foggy out here. Let's continue. It's too early. Exactly where I put gas uh, what, about two weeks ago. Well, I'm hungry. Let's make some breakfast. Well, here we're cooking some quick breakfast on the road. Some uh, some spinach and uh, and mushrooms here, and uh, some eggs scrambling. We'll see how this comes out. We'll add a little bit of. Paprika here. Yeah, oops, too much paprika. Doesn't matter. I love paprika. And salt, pepper. Mm, there we go. Spinach and mushrooms. And very soon we're gonna put the eggs in there. There we go. Put an egg on it or two. I was able to flip it over. Now is that pretty or what? <laughs> Thank you. 
It is, for the most part, a long and boring drive, and the grey gloomy weather certainly doesn't help matters. But some areas? Whew, some areas are absolutely breathtaking. Let's exit here by Sonora, Texas, but guess. The GPS has decided to take me through the middle of town, so let's do that. I can certainly use a change of scenery. Even the most beautiful landscapes can become tedious after so many hours on the road. Now passing by Junction, where they have the park that offers three nights of free camping. Riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Here's the scenic view. I guess. That scenic view wasn't so scenic after all. I'm really tired. I started driving at 6.30 a.m. and it is now 1.30 p.m. One more hour to go. Riding, riding, oh, riding in my RV. We're getting close here, We're getting kind of close, approaching the Texas Hill Country. Well, here we are, we have arrived in San Antonio. And we have a few hours here until sundown, so let's take advantage of them as much as possible. First, let's go to the campground and unhitch. From Florida to Tennessee, my RV, wherever I want to be, cause I'm free in my RV, riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be, cause I'm free in my RV. If you have enjoyed traveling with us, make sure you are subscribed and check out my other videos. Also, share it with your friends, spread the word and leave me a comment. Now, if you really, really liked it, you have a chance to show your support at patreon.com slash travelingrobert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.